Okay, so I didn't know what a temperate deciduous forest was either when I was assigned this project. I mean, those are some pretty big words there. So I started off like any of you would, and I googled it. Apparently, temperate is like mild temperatures, and deciduate is like trees, man. Or more specifically, it has trees and, you know, leaves. And forest is, well, forest. When you put it all together, a temperate deciduous forest is, in a nutshell, pretty much your standard forest. You know, like the one from Robin Hood, Winnie the Pooh, and, uh, I don't know, what's another movie with forest in it? I feel like Shrek has a forest in it, right? Sure, Shrek. Okay, now we're getting places. So, in essence, a temperate deciduous forest is basically the forest behind your neighborhood park. But really, it's so much more than that. The temperate deciduous forest is chock full of interesting little factoids. And you guys are going to learn all about it. Want to know why? Because learning is fun. So without further ado, I give you the temperate deciduous forest. Temperate deciduous forests are located in the mid-latitude areas, which means that they are found between the polar regions and the tropics. The deciduous forest regions are exposed to warm and cold air masses, which cause this area to have four seasons. The temperature varies widely from season to season with cold winters and hot, wet summers. The average yearly temperature is about 10 degrees Celsius, and that can range from negative 30 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, which means hot summers and pretty cold winters. The, uh, the areas in which the deciduous forests are located get about 750 to 1,500 millimeters of precipitation, and that spreads fairly evenly throughout the year. The soil in a temperate deciduous forest is fertile and enriched with a decaying litter. Brown forest soils develop under the TBDF, or Temperate Broadleaf Deciduous Forest. Broadleaf trees tend to be a nutrient demanding, and their leaves bind the major nutrient bases. Thus, the litter under this forest is not as acidic as under needleleaf trees, and alumina, aluminum and iron are not mobilized from the A horizon. The autumn leaf fall provides for an abundant and rich humus which begins to decay rapidly in spring, just as the growing season begins. The humus content gives both A and B horizons a brown, brown color. color. Temperate deciduous forests have many abiotic limiting factors, such as the wind, the water, the temperature, and the sunlight. Strong winds make branches and trees fall, beginning the decomposition process that returns nutrients captured in plants back to the soil. Water is non-living, and plants and animals rely on it for survival. Whether falling on the forest plants as rain or drank by animals from a pond or slow-moving stream, life in the forest would not be able to survive without it. Warm spring months ease the plants and animals back to life, encouraging animal reproduction with the development of new leaves and plants. The warmer summer months allow these animals long enough to raise their young, often allowing them to set off on their own prepared, on their own, prepared to fend for themselves by the fall. As the temperature starts to drop, the trees of the deciduous forest lose their leaves and go into a state of hibernation. This temperature cue is critical for the animals as well, some of whom begin storing food for the winter months, while others gorge themselves in preparation for hibernation. The long winter months mean a struggle for survival during the long period when the deciduous forest is snow covered. Plants and animals alike structure their habits and life cycles around this time. For, as for sunlight, all plants need sunlight to survive. It is the basic building block of life, 
that has formed much of the structure of the deciduous forest. Trees are encouraged to grow tall. The taller the trees, the more sunlight is available to the leaves of the canopy. Beneath these tall, established trees are a shorter layer, often close to the ground. These ferns and shrub-like bushes tend to be varieties that thrive in shady conditions, as they have to survive on what sunlight makes it, on what sunlight makes it through the trees. In turn, many of the herbivores in the forest are species that have adapted to live on these smaller plants. Producers in the deciduous forest food pyramid are the deciduous trees, grasses, and shrubs, and they form the first trophic level. They constitute the, the producers because they are autotrophs and are able to produce food by photosynthesis using solar energy and inorganic materials like water and carbon dioxide. Primary consumers of the deciduous forest food pyramid consist of the herbivores like rodents, squirrels, insects, birds, and deer. These herbivores feed on the leaves and fruits found in the forest. Secondary consumers of the deciduous forest food pyramid consist of small predators like birds, opossum, raccoons, snakes, and foxes. These small carnivores form the third trophic level of the deciduous forest food pyramid. Tertiary consumers of the deciduous forest food pyramid consist of omnivores, like large predators, such as bears and cougars. They form the fourth trophic level of the deciduous forest food pyramid. Plants and animals go through numerous adaptations in the deciduous forest. Deciduous trees are trees that shed their leaves once a year at the approach of a cold or dry season and later grow new leaves. The deciduous trees usually have broad leaves, such as ash, beech, birch, maple, or oak. In summer, their broad green leaves help capture sunlight needed to make food through photosynthesis. But as temperatures drop, the tree cuts off the supply of water to the leaves and seals off the area between the leaf stem and the tree trunk. With limited sunlight and water, the leaves are unable to continue producing chlorophyll, causing them to change into beautiful red, yellow, and orange leaf colors of fall. In winter, it is too cold for the trees to protect their leaves from freezing, so they simply lo loose them up, lose them, and seal up the places where the leaves attach to the branch. Losing their leaves helps trees to conserve water loss through transpiration. Before the leaves die, some of the food material they contain is drawn back into the twigs and branches, where it is stored and used, in, in, uh, used the following spring. The warmer temperatures of spring signal that the trees signal to the trees that they can grow new leaves again and restart the cycle. Animals in temperate deciduous forests also have to adapt to the changing seasons. They must be able to cope with the cold winters when food is in short supply. Migration and hibernation are two adaptations used by animals in this biome. A great variety of birds migrate to warmer places where they can find food more easily. Some mammals hi hibernate during the cold winter months. Squirrels, chipmunks, and some jays often store large supplies of food in the ground, under fallen leaves, or in tree hollows for use during cold winters when food is scarce. Cold temperatures help prevent the decomposition of nuts and seeds. The red wolf is currently an endangered species living in the temperate deciduous forest. Red wolves exist only in a reintroduced population in eastern North Carolina. The species was extinct in the wild by 1980, but was reintroduced by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service in 1987 into eastern North Carolina. The total population within the reintroduction area is less than 150. Abundance outside of the reintroduction area is unknown. Hybridization with coyotes 
or red wolf and coyote hybrid is the primary threat to this species' persistence in the wild. It was first enlisted as endangered in 1982, then listed as critically endangered in 2004. It currently holds the title of critically endangered. The species is not included on the site's appendices. However, the red wolf is listed as endangered under the U.S. Endangered Species Act. The reintroduced animals and their progeny in northeastern North Carolina are considered members of an experimental non-essential population. This designation was promulgated under Section 10J of the ESA and permits the U.S. FWS to manage the population and promote recovery in a manner that is respectful of the needs and concerns of local citizens. Hunting of red wolves is absolutely prohibited by the ESA. To date, federal protection of the red wolf has been adequate to successfully reintroduce and promote recovery of the species in North Carolina. The only free-ranging population of red wolves exists in northeastern North Carolina, an area comp comprised of 60% private land and 40% public land. This area contains three national wildlife ref ref refuges, which provide important protection to the wolves. People cut down forests for houses, ships, furniture, and paper. The land beneath healthy forests is often very rich and good for farming. So farmers cut them down to make space for their farms. It is a benefit for them, but you know, not necessarily good for the forest. The farmers get amazing quality crops, but the forest may never grow back. People also value paper and books to write. People couldn't really live without paper, but we should try to cut down trees less. Clean air and water is absolutely necessary for our environment and a healthy biome and it's partially up to you to keep it clean. In every country, protection of any biome is critical for healthy water. In clear cut forests, the soil loses nutrients and therefore there is less potential for a growing environment. Over time, if there are no trees to keep the soil rich, few plants can grow and the land looks like a desert. There are other ways that the deciduous forests are slowly dying. Acid rain is one of the most destructive types of pollution. Coal burning, power plants, car fuel, and other sources mixed with rain over time, and the rain kills trees and other plants. It can cause major environmental harm, and, only, and not only trees and plants, but on living organisms and ponds and lakes. So, what can we do? You can drive less often, you can plant more trees, you can try your best to keep the rivers and ponds clean around our forests, you can recycle your paper, you can use less paper towels, and you can responsibly spend more of your free time in the forest. After all, it's a thing of beauty.